Gonna go for landing. Retro. Go. Rhino. Go. Guidance. Go. Control. Go. Talcom. Go. GNC. Go. Ecom. Go. Surgeon. Go. Capcom, we're go for landing. Altitude 4200. Houston, you're a go for landing. Over. I got it Go for landing. 3,000 feet. You're looking great. How you doing, Control? We look good here. Fine. Uh, Java 2, Telcom. Go. Guidance, you happy? Go. Fido. Go. 2,000 feet. 2,000 feet. End of the ag. 47 degrees. Roger. 47 degrees. Still looking very good. Here go. Got a bar. 
uh, like looks like they're the high desert of uh, the United States. It's, uh Take a look at the pattern on the rug where the toys are arranged. Does that pattern remind you of anything you would see at the National Aeronautics Space Administration, NASA? This is what a NASA launch pad looks like. Here's another image of a NASA launch pad. This is 39A, the launch pad of Apollo 11. The boy, Danny, symbolizes Stanley Kubrick. He is kneeling in the center of an imaginary launch pad. Look at Danny's sweater. There is an image of a rocket on it. Not just any rocket, a very special one. Danny begins to stand up. The rocket is beginning to lift off. Look at the name of the rocket on the sweater. And the name is Apollo. More specifically, Apollo 11 USA. Danny Stanley Kubrick is the Apollo 11 mission. The Apollo 11 rocket begins its journey down a corridor. The journey of the Apollo 11 rocket brings us to a room with an open door. Room 237. In the book, The Shining, the room number is 217, but for the film, Kubrick changed it to 237. Here's the true reason why. The Moon. The natural satellite of Earth, visible by reflection of sunlight, and traveling around Earth in a slightly elliptical orbit at an average distance of about 381,600 kilometers. The American Heritage Science Dictionary. 381,600 kilometers converted to miles is 237,000. Room 237 represents the moon. Danny enters room 237, the moon room. This is where Stanley Kubrick films the Apollo 11 moon landing. Danny comes out of room 237. He has marks on his throat and his Apollo 11 sweater is torn. His mother wants to know what happened to him, but now he won't speak about what took place in room 237. Kubrick has been forced to remain silent about the Apollo 11 moon hoax. Though the federal government would have you believe that this is a view of Earth from a distance out of the spacecraft's window as it nears the moon, it is not. 
What they have ingeniously done is placed the camera at the back of the spacecraft and centered the lens on a circular window in the foreground, outside of which it is completely filled with the Earth in low orbit. The circumference of the window then appears to be the diameter of the Earth at a distance, with the darkened walls of the spacecraft appearing to be the blackness of space around it. As they perfected the shot, a crescent-shaped piece of black material was inset slightly into the window to create the illusion of the Earth's terminator line dividing night and day. It is uncannily convincing. During this segment, intended to be edited and played back later for the worldwide television audience, dated July 18, 1969, Neil Armstrong condemns himself as he states that he is 130,000 miles out, or halfway to the moon, as the NASA flight log also states on this date, when he is in reality in low Earth orbit of a few hundred miles. Uh, did you send Apollo 11? Calling in from about 130,000 miles out. We only have one uh, window that uh, has a view of the Earth, and it's filled up with a TV camera. If the window was completely filled up with a TV camera, as he stated, then an astronaut's arm would not be able to get between the camera and the window, as it obviously does here in this outtake. South America becomes invisible just off beyond the Terminator or inside the shadow. This is a segment that they believed wasn't even being recorded, much less suitable for broadcast, for the lens was being zoomed out and the scene was being changed to that of an interior of the astronauts at work and apparently the stop button popped back up on the recorder without notice. Here is the diffused work light that they used to see camera controls but not throw light onto the spacecraft's wall. Here they remove part of the crescent insert Finally, the iris is opened up and you can see the real location of the camera and the very bright and near Earth out the window. Murph is a great kid. She's really bright, but she's been having a little trouble lately. She brought this in to show the other students the section on the lunar landings. Yeah, it's one of my old textbooks. She always loved the pictures. It's an old federal textbook. We've replaced them with the corrected versions. Corrected? Explaining how the Apollo missions were fake to bankrupt the Soviet Union. You don't believe we went to the moon? I believe it was a brilliant piece of propaganda that the Soviets bankrupted themselves, pouring resources into rockets and other useless machines. Useless machines? And if we don't want a repeat of the excess and wastefulness of the 20th century, then we need to teach our kids about this planet, not tales of leaving it. But Murph got into a fistfight with several of her classmates over this Apollo nonsense. Apollo nonsense. Apollo nonsense. Apollo nonsense. Apollo nonsense. I believe it was a brilliant piece of propaganda. I believe it was a brilliant piece of propaganda. I believe it was a brilliant piece of propaganda. I believe it was a brilliant piece of propaganda. I believe it was a brilliant piece of propaganda.